1896, one of the pillars of the ancient Buddhist emperor Ashoka was excavated at Lumbini in Nepal. And that pillar, or writing on it, verified that location as the Buddha's birthplace, which had been supposed and, and talked about for centuries where, where it might be. The, a year later, uh, the Englishman William Claxton Pepe uh, decided to excavate a mound that was lay on his land some uh, near the, t the, the village of Piprahua, which was some 19 kilometers south of Lumbini. And in the words of John Guy, who was the chief curator of South Asian art at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, the large, slim brick types in the mound indicated Mauryan construction of around the 3rd century BCE, while the chamber, there was a chamber inside the mound, was found to contain the most spectacular relic container ever recovered in Buddhist India. Inside that container were five reliquaries and some 1,800 uh, pieces of uh, precious stones, gems, uh, pearls, gold, silver, as well as uh, what appeared to be remains of bones and ash. And one of the reliquaries had an inscription in ancient Brahmi script attesting to the fact that these were the remains of the Buddha. Now, these earthly remains were of sufficient importance to the Buddhist Sangha that William Claxton Pepe decided to actually donate them to the king of, of Siam, or Thailand, because he was the only remaining Buddhist king in the world. And that king, then having received these earthly remains, uh, donated parts of them to Burma and to Sri Lanka as well. The remains of the treasure, that is to say the more earthly sorts of treasure, the gemstones and gold and so on, went to the uh, Indian Museum in Kolkata, while William Claxton Pepe was left with what, are, what were termed duplicate items. Some, uh, some of these uh, gemstones and so on had duplicates, had sort of seconds, and so they gave a, a, s a small number of the seconds to him for having discovered this all. Now, it goes without saying almost that all of this is not without controversy, because relics, let's face it, are a dime a dozen. It's very easy to fake relics or uh, bones can be from anywhere, from anyone. Ash can be from anywhere. It's said, when it, when it comes to Christian relics, it's said that there are enough uh, pieces of the true cross to build a ship, or probably a fleet of ships. So it's not as though we can immediately say that because there are relics, therefore they are from the Buddha. We'll never know for sure where this material is from, but more investigation needs to be done. Now, when I was, uh, a few years ago, I should say, there was an exhibit of this artwork or these uh, examples from Pepe because his, the, 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 the pieces of the, the relics, that is to say the duplicate items that, that do not include the human relics, but the duplicate kind of gemstones that, he, that Pepe was left with, came to New York uh, back in uh, early 2020 for a show at the Rubin Museum. I've got a link to that show down below in the notes. It's quite a few years ago that the show was on, but the webpage still remains. And when I saw that show at the time, I really didn't know quite what to make of it. Indeed, the, the, exhibit, uh, the exhibit catalog, that is to say the information that they gave in the show, didn't re it wasn't really clear that, that they knew what to make of it either. Uh, these things were claimed to be relics, but what are we, how much, how, how, how much faith or, or belief are we to have in them? Are, are they really relics or are they just something that's relatively recent? Now, I bring these up because these very same relics are presently in the exhibit at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York called Tree and Serpent, Early Buddhist Art in India. I just did a video about that. I'll leave a link to that video down below in the notes. So these are on display through mid-November of 2023. And the reason why this is important is because the uh, John Guy, who is the chief curator of this exhibit, as well as being 
the chief curator of South Asian art at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, he makes a very strong circumstantial case that these relics should be taken seriously. John Guy notes that subsequent excavations of, the, these, uh, of this site and sites nearby in the 1970s by the Indian Archaeological Survey have established pretty well that Piprahua, which is the town near where these were discovered, seems to have been the ancient site of Kapilavattu, or Kapilavastu, which was the capital of the Sakya clan in the Buddha's day. And some of us may, may remember that the Buddha, one of the epithets, one of the names of the Buddha was uh, the sage of the Sakyas, Sakya Muni. That's because the Sakya clan is the clan that he came from. And after the Buddha's death, it's said in the most famous sutta, early sutta, about the last days of the Buddha, it's said that the Buddha's remains were uh, taken by the Brahmin Drona or Dona and, uh, and, and parceled out in pieces and parts to various uh, people. And one of those uh, parts was given to the Sakya clan to have at their location, at Kapilavattu. Indeed, the Archaeological Survey of India also found additional reliquaries below the level of the one that had been found by uh, Pepe uh, in the late 19th century. And these additional reliquaries also contained bone. Now, John Guy, this a curator at the Metropolitan Museum, says that he suspects that at some point this stupa was rebuilt, that originally it would have been a mud stupa, but that at some point later on, probably a during or after, slightly after the reign of Ashoka, it would have been upgraded to be this kind of brick structure, brick stupa. And he says that when this happens, when these stupas were rebuilt, typically donors would use that as an, as, as an opportunity to donate uh, precious items in order to gain merit, in order to gain good karma. And so, therefore, it would have been during that reconstruction, a couple of centuries after the Buddha's death, that these precious items, or at least some of them, would have been interred as well. As he says, Thus, it is reasonable to surmise that the Piprahwa bone relics represent the Shakya clan's share of the original division by the Brahmin Drona, as implicit in the reliquary inscription, and that the seven surviving reliquary containers and their precious material contents represent deposits at the time of the stupa's rebuilding in brick or dur during or shortly after the reign of Ashoka. Now, it will, of course, forever be impossible to know for sure the true origin of these relics, whether they actually come from the Buddha, that is to say the bone remains, whether they actually come from the Buddha or not. And, let's face it, the true relics, the true remains of the Buddha, are in his dharma, in the, the suttas and all the other information that comes down to us from his lifetime, rather than in particular earthly remains. Nevertheless, all of this is, I think, very interesting to contemplate. If you're interested in seeing these things, as I say, they, they will be on display at the Metropolitan Museum through, roughly speaking, the, the middle of November. I believe it, the show ends around November 13th or 14th, 2023. Uh, I'll leave a link again to the web page down below, the web page at the Met and uh, the earlier one at the Rubin. And if you're interested in this general question about the Buddha's existence, whether the Buddha existed, because I think this particular uh, uh, interpretation by John Guy gives a lot of additional uh, reason to believe the Buddha was a real person, but if you're still questioning that or, or interested in that question, I did an earlier uh, video on the question. I'll leave a link to that up here on the screen if you haven't seen it or would like to see it again. So if you're getting something out of these videos of mine, consider taking a look at my Patreon page and seeing if you want to help support the channel and the work that I'm doing here, the work that we're all doing. Uh, again, a link to it is down below in the notes or up here on the screen. Thanks so much, and we'll catch you on the next video. And meanwhile, all of you, be well.